What's going on folks? Ted from Nerd Immersion here and it's news time. We haven't had done news in a minute here. So Wild Beyond the Witchlight is two weeks away, the 21st it comes out, and a Polygon article was released providing a little more insight into some changes and things we might have seen from basically the two races, right? The fairy and the rabbit folk, which is now the Herringon. I still hate that name, but it is what it is. So let's go ahead and take a look. And I thought I would say, hey, if you like what I do here, consider subscribing to the channel. My goal was to hit 80,000 before Gen Con, 79.1, 900 more subs before next Wednesday. Can we do it? I don't know. Oh, and just real quick, I'm gonna be at Gen Con. I'll have all of these, you know, these Nerd Immersion stickers and I've got dice and pins and stuff. And my schedule, pretty wide open. So if there's something cool you think I should see, you've got a product you'd like me to come check out, or interview you about something, or maybe just a cool game and your spot's got a table open and you want me to come play with you, let me know. I'm really wide open about it. So, all right, let's take a look at the article. Here it is, it's also be linked in the description if you wanna check it out. So it's, it's titled, Chonky Fairies and Sassy Rabbit Folk Are Coming to D&D. Okay, sure. Uh, so here we can see some fairy art right here, right? Um, so there's an interview with Chris Perkins, talks about the Feywild. Uh, I'm going to focus less on what he's talking about here and more of the mechanics and kind of the stuff about the races, uh, as that's kind of what the purpose of this is, right? So it's ruled by a bunch of powerful creatures. Um, he says it's not all whimsy, it's not all Brothers Grimm. It's kind of a blend, right? Um and it says, one of the most eagerly anticipated features are the two new races. For the first time ever in 5th edition D&D, players can choose to be fairies, humanoid flying creatures that float in the air like Tinkerbell, but don't expect them to be wriggling through a keyhole. So that was something I believe, I can't remember if they were small or tiny size in the Unearthed Arcana, but they are officially small size as of the published version here in the book. So they say they are about halfling size, so around two and a half uh, to three feet tall. Uh, so you're not going to be able to play like a tiny little pixie style um, Tinkerbell character. You'll be like a flying halfling. But they said it's just the fairy. You can have, you can pretty much name it whatever you want, as he says right here, right? The type, uh, the fact that you can fly, uh, uh, what kind of fairy you are is customizable. If you want to call yourself a brownie, right? As in like the, you know, or I uh, go ahead. If you want to be a generic fairy, go right ahead. If you want to, whatever you want to call yourself, you know, design yourself at, you don't have to truly be like a pixie because you have wings, you pick it yourself, right? The more novel option uh, is the Herringon, the human rabbit folk. So uh, Chris tells a story about talking to Ari Levitch, uh, one of the lead writers on it. Uh, he said they were looking basically through inspirational sources of folklore and they came across this what you, a pen and ink illustration of a group of rabbit brigands. He liked the imagery so much because the sort of aggressive bully and the gentle rabbit don't go together. He was sharing some of the images and talked about what if he could put a group of brigands in the adventure who are kind of like these rabbit dickheads. And I thought, okay, yeah, that, that'll be fun. And then here's a little bit. This is an excerpt from the book here. But it says, when the concept art of these furry brigands was shared with the wider team, everyone at Wizards wanted to play test one. So they made the Unearthed Arcana about it. And then this is... I can't imagine this is news to Chris at this point, but it turns out, actually, that any creature with an animal head is pretty easy sell to our fans. But there's something about rabbits that I guess is just too much to pass up, and that's how the Herringons came to be. Coming out September 21st. I will say again, where are the dog people, Chris Perkins and D&D &D team? We got two different kinds of bird people. We got the Aracocra, we got the owl folk coming out or owlin or whatever they're called coming out later in this year. We got frog people in the Grung. We got fish people in the Lakatha. We got turtle people in the Tortles. We got lizard people in the lizard folk. Uh, and now we're gonna have rabbit people in the Herringon. We got cat people, two kinds of cat people in the Leonin and the Tabaxi. And another bird person too in the Kenku. And we can't get a dog? We got, I mean, come on. That seems like a no-brainer. Give us a dog race. Uh, and then we have a little bit of an excerpt here uh, from uh, the race section of the book, right? It looks like this is page 12. So it doesn't give us too much information, not much to glean here, but they are keeping the same ability scores we saw introduced in um, 
Van Richten's, where it is a plus two to one stat and a plus one to another, or a plus one to three, your choice. The language is, this is kind of the generic stuff we see now at the start before we dive into the specifics of the races, right? Language common and one of your choice. We still don't know the type of creature. It doesn't list it here. It'll be listed under the race stat block. So for example, the fairy might be fey creatures, not humanoids, similar to how like the satyr and the centaur are fey, not humanoids. Uh, lifespan. Now here's something. This is something new. If you recall, I complained and bitched about this a lot. Um, was the the lack of lifespan. Now I can't say that I'm the direct uh, relation to this showing up in here. But I complained a lot about how they say, you know, you, this is the kind of the generic stuff that you keep. And then that's how it is. But the important part to me was always the lifespan of something like a Dampier, right? You were a race prior, whether you were lizard folk, human, elf, whatever, prior. And then you obtain this new race, essentially, in this, this lineage of the Dampier. But it doesn't describe if you have an extended life or anything. Because basically it's saying you have these standard set of things and then the new ones added, right? So the standard things being the ability score increases, the languages, the creature type, the height and weight, and the lifespan. Those are sort of exist uh, like prior to the sub features of the races. So we talked about ability scores. Language is usually common in another one of your choice. If there's more bonus languages, those will be added in the race features itself. And obviously you can change those with your DM. The creature type is typically humanoid, and it goes on to describe the different creature types that are listed right here, and how certain things affect certain creature types differently, right? So, for example, Cure Wounds doesn't work on constructs or undead. So if you had a character that was a construct as their creature type, they could not be healed by something like Cure Wounds. Uh, whereas, again, if you are a fey type creature, like, say, a satyr, you are ineffected by things like Charm Person or Dominate Person, because those only work on humanoids. They probably should have changed that to charm humanoid and dominate humanoid. It doesn't roll off the tongue as well. And there are classic names from previous D&D &D things, but that would help that a lot. And then we have lifespan, right? So it says typically most races in D&D &D live about a century, 100 years, uh, with the exception of certain races being more long lived, like, say, elves and dwarves. And they say fairies and herringons, however, have a lifespan about a century. Now that one shocked me a little bit. For some reason, I figured fairies would be like nigh immortal, right? Not a hundred year lifespan. I don't know, let me know how you feel about that. And then it says height and weight here. Player characters, regardless of race, typically fall into same weight and height ranges uh, we have in our world. If you like to determine the character's weight or height randomly, consult the random height table in the player's handbook. Choose a wrong way to the table that best represents the build you imagine for your character. So that is something new. We don't have that before. In the previous ones, they used to, like, where they added new races in, say, like, Volos or something, they would give you a new table with that. What they're saying here, which I kind of like, it's leaning more into the customizability of Tasha's. Pick a race that kind of is a similar build to what your character is going to be. So if we were specifically referencing the fairies being similar to halflings, probably look at the halfling weight height generation table in the player's handbook and use that to generate your fairy whereas if you were happening to be uh i would guess maybe a herringon if you're a lithe one maybe more along the lines of like an elf the elf one use that as a reference or something like that uh and then again it goes on to just we get the little bit about the fairy here and it says, infused with magic of the Feywild, most fairies look like small elves with insectile wings, but each fairy has a special physical characteristic that sets the fairies apart. Now, we don't get to see it, but there's like a, a quirk-style table following this up. It says, for your fairy, roll on the fey, and we don't get the rest of it. It's probably like the fey attribute table or something, and it'll be like, your fairy has purple hair, or your fairy's skin glows in the dark. I don't know, whatever the case may be, but there's a table coming up there, and then again, we have... A little bit here about the heron gone as well and again some new art i don't believe we've seen this art before of this heron gone wielding like a halberd here uh and then again this is just the same art that we saw up, up above just shown on the page here so there you have it folks a little bit of news kind of uh we got a little bit of insight into how this is going to work we know the lifespan and that lifespan categories are going to be added to future race books which is exciting so we have that and no one has to question it uh, yeah, and uh, like I said, it, it, it furthers my conspiracy theory that Wizards of the Coast does not want to add a dog race to Dungeons & Dragons for some reason. 
And when I say my, my conspiracy theory, it really isn't. It's just we have so many other animals except dogs. And, like, we know Chris Perkins loves his dog Milo. Why is there not a dog race? Anyway, that's enough for me. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.